Hi, I'm Angie and this is your 30 minute Pilates class, including the introduction to Pilates where we talk about the principles and then the basic techniques that you'll need to apply to each Pilates class before we move into some basic movements. So let's talk about what the principles are that are behind Pilates. First of all, concentration. So there is a lot going on when we practice Pilates from our breathing pattern to movement pattern and really focusing on that mind to body connection. So we really need to concentrate hard. Our centering, Pilates works from our center. So we re need to make sure that we are activating our core before anything else. And then we move on to other areas of the body. Breathing. In Pilates, there is a specific breathing pattern for every single exercise. The breathing is there to help facilitate the correct muscle activation. And it also helps you when the movement starts to get just that little bit more challenging. Control. When we move, we move with control. So again, it's that mind to body connection, making sure that we're not just flopping the arm or the leg out and in and sort of mimicking the movement pattern, but not really thinking about the control behind the movement. And then precise. So that kind of ties in with that control principle as well, that the movement needs to be as exact as it can be. So really listening to all those vocal cues, trying to work with that control and the precision flowing movement rather than jarring into each movement making it like a stop start action we want it to flow continuously as though there is no beginning and no end to the exercise as opposed to really that stiff and starchy mo movement even though we're trying to work towards reps just think about continual flow Isolation. Again, this comes back to that control, precise movement. We want to isolate our muscle groups. So we might be moving several muscle groups at the same time. For example, if we're working with the legs, something as simple as coming to a turned out position might engage the adductors more, so our inner thighs, rather than the quadriceps, which are our big dominant muscle and like to take over a lot. So we're looking at that isolation. And finally, routine. So with any good exercise regime, routine is super important to get the most out of our exercise. With Pilates, it can actually reset your postural alignment, help with a lot of common ailments that we experience in day-to-day -day life. The more that we can create Pilates as part of our routine, the more likely we are to bring this into our everyday behaviours. So let's start talking through now the basic techniques that you'll need to apply within each Pilates class. So I'll get you down in a back laying position with your knees bent and your feet on the floor. Taking the heel of your hand, first of all, to hip bones, fingertips to pubic bone and join your thumbs together to make a diamond on your front. We'll then rock forward and back a few times loosening out through the spine, just releasing any tension that we're holding on to. And I want you to stop when you feel like the arch is present in your back. So this is where the natural arch is present. This is our neutral spinal position. I can check this position by glancing down and seeing that my fingertips are sitting parallel to my thumbs. For our imprinted spine, I'm going to use my abdominals to draw down towards the mat, trying to close down the gap as best as I can. To check my position is correct, glancing down at the fingers again, and I can see that my fingertips are sitting parallel to my thumbs. Releasing the head back down and coming back to your neutral spinal position. So we want that arch to be present here. You'll hear me talking about T-zone a lot throughout class. It's a really important cue. It refers to our pelvic floor and our deep abdominal muscles. To find these muscles, draw a line from hip bone across to the other hip bone. This line represents your deep abdominal muscles. And then find your pubic bone and draw a line up to meet that line. So this line represents your pelvic floor muscle. When we join them together, they make an imaginary T on the front, which is where the nickname T-zone comes from. To feel these muscles activating, we pop our fingers together like so and find your hip bones, first of all. 
then come in slightly and press in quite firmly. Now, if you don't press in firmly, you're not going to feel anything happening here at all. On your next inhale breath, draw up the vertical line of the T as though you're trying to stop from going to the toilet. So you're focusing on drawing that pelvic floor muscle up and just hold it lifted, breathing naturally. Nothing else should change. We're not looking at anything changing on our postural alignment, just lifting that pelvic floor and holding it there. And then you can release, let it go, but keep pressing in quite firmly for me. Again, on your next inhale breath, draw up the vertical line of the T. Lift that pelvic floor muscle. Now really try and engage those muscles underneath where you're pressing. So hopefully you can feel something hardening up underneath your fingers. If you can't quite feel anything yet, that's okay. That's why we're here to strengthen these muscles up. So imagine those deep abdominal muscles are drawing across to the center point and flattening down towards your spine. So that's your T-zone activation. Every time I say switch your T-zone on or T-zone tight, that's what I want you to do. Lift that pelvic floor muscle, engage those deep abdominal muscles, drawing them across to the center point and flattening down towards your spine. Let's just release that now, staying in our neutral spinal position. Coming into our breath. So our breathing is in through the nose, and out through the mouth, like a sigh breath. Avoiding a deep belly breath like yoga, Pilates breath is into the rib cage. So inhale, ribs expand, exhale, ribs close down and in. Yep, so in through the nose, out through the mouth. Keeping the chin just gently tucked in, not over tucked. Imagine that you can fit a, approximately a fist in between the chin and the chest. And hands down by the sides, shoulders down and back. That's your Pilates basics and we are ready to get into some basic movement. Okay, so let's start warming up through the T-zone with our leg slides. So keeping our neutral spinal position, inhale T-zone, exhale slide one heel along the floor, inhale gently drawing it back in. Other side, exhale, slide the heel away. Inhale, bringing it back in. So with this one, nice and steady, try not to make it quick. We want to find the control that we talked about with our principles. Precise movement as we slide the heel away, thinking about the ribs gliding down towards the hips. I'm maintaining my neutral spinal position. T-zone is switched on. Avoiding my hips rocking side to side. And the active T-zone will help support that action. Exhale as we slide away. Inhale, bring it back in. Making sure my stationary knee doesn't flay out to the side at all. We'll just finish off here with one more. And resting the foot back down, our arm preparation, floating the arms up so they're above the shoulders with the palms facing away from you, still in a neutral spine. T-zone tight. Then with our exhale breath, float the arms down to the floor as far as you can without changing the spinal alignment. Inhale, lifting back up to the top. Exhale, float those arms down. Inhale, draw them back up. So this one is nice and gentle. We should just feel the stretch through the shoulders and down through the arms. Bearing in mind that everybody's quite different with the range of movement. So I've got a decent amount of flexibility in the shoulders. If you're a little bit tighter or have any sort of injuries, you might find that you can't go quite as far and that's okay. We're just floating down as far as we can without causing any sort of pain. Exhale, float down. Inhale, up. And let's just take one more here. All right, we're going to combine the two together. Leg slides with the arm preparation. Inhale, T-zone. Exhale, float the arms down, slide one heel away. Inhale, draw it all back in. 
exhale, other side, inhale, draw it back in. And we just keep going like that, trying not to build up momentum, being nice and controlled and precise with our movement, thinking about that active T-zone. So as the arms and the feet extend away, the ribs glide down towards the hips, keeping the T-zone switched on, and that neutral spine. We'll just go for a couple more here. And one more. Taking it back up and resting the hands back down. Moving on to our abdominal curl now to work our abdominals. The hands come back behind the head. We'll work with the feet down on the floor. Inhale, T-zone. Exhale, gliding ribs to hips, curling up as high as you can. Inhale, resting back down. And we keep going, exhale, curl. Inhale, release back down. Keeping those elbows nice and wide, so make sure we don't draw the elbows forward as we lift. Keeping the head resting back into the hands. We don't want to be pulling on the head at all to try and curl up. All of the work should be in the abdominals, so focus on that work, lifting up as high as you can each time. <sighs> Trying not to pick up pace, just nice and steady, continuous flow. We've got a few more here. <sighs> Keep it nice and gentle. If you need to reset the T-zone each time as you set back down, that's okay. You can take a moment there to reset. Make sure it's switched on before you curl up into the next one. Two more to go. Exhale. Lifting up as high as you can. Keep the elbows wide. Inhale. Rest down. And last one. Exhale. Lift. Inhale. Lower. Taking the hands back by the sides, we're still keeping with our neutral spinal position. Moving into lift foot, continuing to work through the abdominals. Inhale, T-zone. Exhale, lifting one leg to tabletop. Inhale, resting back down. Other side, exhale, lift. Inhale, lower back down. So just nice and gentle, focusing on the abdominal activation, using that T-zone. Nice, controlled, precise movement. As we come up, hitting that true tabletop position each time. So the knee should be stacked above the hip and shins are parallel to the floor. Making sure we don't start to poke the chin out as we're concentrating, keeping the shoulders down and back. Making sure that the stationary knee doesn't move out to the side to compensate for the lifting leg. We'll just take a few more. Keep thinking about that T-zone activation. Just holding on to that neutral spine. Trying not to pick up our pace. We should be feeling a nice bit of warmth through the abdominals now. And last one. And rest back down. Moving into our oblique curl, taking the hands back behind the head. Feet are down for this one. Inhale, T-zone. Exhale, armpit lifts up towards the opposite hip. Inhale, resting back down. Exhale to the other side, armpit towards the opposite hip. Inhale, rest back down. So the reason we think about the armpit rather than the elbow is that we want the elbows to stay nice and wide with this movement. Thinking more about the obliques, taking all the power here, lifting up as high as you can. The ribs still glide down towards the hips. My knees aren't moving. I'm keeping my feet planted on the floor, making sure that I'm not pulling on the head to try and create this lift nice and gentle. Resting the head back into the hands. 
We're going to keep going for a few more here. Keep using that breath. Exhale, lift. Inhale, rest. Exhale, lift. Inhale, rest. We should be feeling a lot warmer through the abdominals now. Keep it coming. We'll go for our last three. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. Last one to each side, curling up as high as you can, keeping the elbows wide. And last one. And resting back down. And we can release those hands now. We'll roll onto our side, coming into a little bit of work for the glutes. Reaching the bottom arm nice and long, bending the knees with the feet back in line with the body. We can just rest the hand down in front while we're getting our balance here. Thinking about this top hip, we want it to stay stacked on top of the bottom hip. So we use our T-zone activation to activate that. So go ahead and switch your T-zone on. Keep thinking about that top hip staying stacked. It's really important as we start moving. So inhale, T-zone. As we start to move, exhale, squeeze the heels together and then just open that top knee. Now nothing moves here, that top hip stays where it is. Inhale, close it down. Exhale, squeeze, open the knee. Inhale, resting back down. Now if you're doing okay with your balance, you can take this hand and just place it on your bottom here. So as you squeeze those heels together, hopefully you can feel a little squeeze in the glute muscles. Inhale, close it down. So just keep progressing nice and gentle. I do like to feel that squeeze so that I'm I know I'm working the right muscle groups. Inhale, close down. Keeping the T-zone switched on. Keep thinking about the top hip drawing down towards the bottom hip. We've got a few more here. Keep that breathing coming. Exhale as you open. Inhale, close it down. Should be feeling a little bit of warmth now through the glute. Remember, it's not about opening that knee as far as you can. We want to keep that top hip stacked. And we can rest back down. Moving straight into our kick out now. So I'll get you to place the hand back down until we know we've got our balance here. Inhale, T-zone. And we're going to squeeze the heels, open that top knee. Exhale, reach that top leg long, keeping it in line with the body. So really making sure you're not rocking backwards off center here. And we bring it all back in and close it down. Inhale, open. Exhale, extend. Inhale, touch. Exhale, close down. Inhale. So trying to work with the rhythm of the breathing. Let that set the pace of the movement. We don't want to pick up speed here. Really get the most work out of those glute muscles. Make them work hard for you. As we extend that leg long each time, making sure that we don't roll off our center point. Use that T-zone activation. Keep thinking about the top hip drawing down towards the bottom hip. If you're feeling confident with your balance here, you are welcome to place your hand back on the bottom and just feel the squeeze each time as the glutes work. If you can't quite feel squeezes yet, that's okay too. It does take a little bit of time to strengthen these muscles up. Keep it coming. We're almost there. Don't give up just yet. We've got two more rounds. Try and make that movement as precise and controlled as you can. Try and control those wobbles if you're starting to fatigue a little bit. We've got one last one to go. And touch it down and close. If you need to, give your bottom a little bit of a rub and we will flip over onto the other side. 
So set yourself up, bottom arm long, top hip on top of the bottom hip. Make sure that your feet are in line with the body. So don't let them come out slightly back in line with the body. Inhale, T-zone. Exhale, squeeze the heels, open the knee. Inhale, close it down. Exhale, squeeze, open the knee. And close it down. Now, if you want to, if you want to feel the glute working, pop your hand on your bottom so you can feel that squeeze each time. If you feel your T-zone switch off, you can stop and take a moment to reset. As we get tired, make sure we don't start rocking back. Keep it coming. We've got two more reps to go. Try and keep that movement nice and flowing. Almost there, one more to go. And resting down. We can place our hand back down onto the floor now to help with our balance. T-zone switched on. Inhale, squeeze the heels, open the knee. Exhale, reach that top leg long. Inhale, touch the toes. Exhale, close it down. Inhale, open. Exhale, extend. Inhale, touch. And exhale, close back down. So really moving with each breath. Let the breath set the rhythm. Try not to race through it. We want that glute to work hard for us. If you like now, you can take that hand and place it onto the bottom. If you're okay with your balance, just make sure you don't roll back slightly. Focus on keeping that top hip stacked. Pointing down into the toes as we reach that leg long. We're about halfway through these ones now. Keep it coming. If it's starting to get hard, pop a little smile on your face. It always tricks you into thinking it's a little bit easier than what it is. Keep it coming. Down to our last three reps now. Hold on to all that technique. We start to let things go when we get fatigued. Keep thinking about your T-zone activation, keeping the top hip stacked, really squeezing the glute, make it work hard. We are almost there, we've got one more to go. Let's finish it off strong. And gently ease it back down and release. You can give your bottom a little bit of a rub if it needs it. Flipping over onto the belly now, we're taking a little bit of upper back work. So placing our forearms down into our sphinx pose and we'll just release down slightly. So we're almost rounding through the upper back. Just try not to drop the head all the way through. Still keep the head up in line with the spine. In this position, Switch your T-zone on, then with your inhale breath, draw those shoulder blades down and back and try and lift slightly. Exhale, little release back down. Inhale, draw those shoulders down and back and exhale, release back down. Let's keep it coming. Inhale, little lift. So it's not a big movement. It's nice and gentle, just about activating those upper back muscles. Keep it coming, really focusing on that breathing pattern. Inhale as we lift. Exhale, gently drop it back down. We're up to our last couple of reps, inhale. Keep it coming nice and smooth. Really focus on how that upper back is working to lift each time. Last two.
And you've got one more. And resting back down. Coming all the way down onto the mat. So you're resting your forehead down. For our breaststroke arm prep. So cactus those arms out to the side. Just relaxing through the legs for now. Tuck your pubic bone into the floor for me. T-zone switched on. As we inhale, lifting the top half of the body, so the chest, the arms, and the head. From here, we'll start taking some circles, roughly dinner plate size, just over the surface of the floor. Really focus on that T-zone activation to create that lift, feeling how the shoulder blade muscles draw down and back to keep the arms circling. We are keeping the head up in line with the spine, with the eye gaze down. If you are finding it tough on the neck in this position, you can rest the forehead back down and keep going with the arm work. But if you can, stay lifted. We'll go for a few more reps here. Four, three, two, last one. And rest down. Take a breath here. And we'll go for one more set of that breaststroke arm prep. Tuck your pubic bone in, T-zone switched on. As we inhale, lifting the top half of the body. And then start breathing naturally, taking those circles over the surface of the floor. Keeping the head up in line with the spine, unless you're finding that you're getting any sort of neck pain, then you can rest back down. Really lifting up as high as you can. Try and work the upper back muscles. Keep the T-zone switched on to support the lower back. We're going for a few more circles here. Four, three, two, Last one, and rest down. Take a moment to catch your breath. And moving into flight. So we'll stay in this position with the forehead down on the mat, hands back by the sides with the palms facing to the sky. Tuck your pubic bone into the mat, T-zone switched on. As we inhale, lifting the top half of the body, with the arms and the head. We start to breathe naturally as we take full rotations. So internal, external rotations, turning the entire arm. So we're not just turning the wrists or the elbows, it's right from the shoulder, lifting up as high as you can. You do have that option here. If it's getting too much, you can rest the forehead back down and keep going with the arm work. Otherwise, stay lifted up nice and high. We'll go for a few more reps. Four, three, two, last one, and resting back down. Just take a little breath here. And we'll go for one more set of flight. Tuck your pubic bone in. T-zone switched on. With your inhale breath, lifting up, breathing naturally. Start with those internal, external rotations. Keep it coming. Make sure it's the entire arm, internal, external. Breathing naturally. T-zone stays activated. Four, three, two, last one, and you can rest back down. Taking the hands underneath the shoulders and pull back into your child's pose. Sealing the bottom to the heels, reaching through the fingers. Give yourself a nice big stretch here. Releasing that upper back, it's worked pretty hard for you.
and sliding the hands into the knees. We'll come back down to back laying. Give the glutes a little bit of a stretch. They've also worked pretty hard for us today. So we'll take one leg over the top. Now you can just press the knee away here. You'll feel that stretch quite nicely. If you need a little bit of a deeper stretch, you can thread through and squeeze the knee in towards the chest. And we'll gently release, either just pressing away or you've got the option to thread through. And releasing, just rocking on up to sitting. We'll take one leg in front of the other leg. So we've got a foot tucked back here by the bottom, hands onto the knees. The hand furthest away from that back foot, reach it up and over towards the foot. Now, if you need a bit of a deeper stretch, taking the free hand across to the other knee and we can really open up, gaze underneath the armpit and open up, switch those legs over. Hands on the knees, the opposite hand to the back foot there, reaching over the top. And then if you need that deeper stretch, the free hand comes across, gazing up past the armpit. Feel that big side stretch. And opening up and release. That brings us to the end of class. Thank you for joining me.